I got a lot to share today, but let me start with something that a friend of mine from Thailand just sent me. Quote, you'll lose a lot of money chasing women, but you'll never lose women chasing money, end quote. So all you guys out there that think you got to buy the handbag, take them to Vegas, fancy restaurants all the time, and that's the way to either win the lady or secure the lady or keep the lady, no. The point of this quote, you'll lose a lot of money chasing women, of course, as I just said, with all these expenses, but you'll never lose women chasing money, meaning chasing money just means ambition. If you've got ambition, you've got drive, and you're pushing, guess who wants you? The ladies do. That's the way it works. They're not stupid. Nobody wants to be around some guy who's just sending off handbags and other nonsense but he doesn't really have anything going on. So I think from a big picture standpoint, to start my episode today, have something going on. Damn straight, right? Let me jump you into another quote, something that is near and dear to me. From JFK, John F. Kennedy. There are risks and costs to action but they are far less than the long-range risks of comfortable inaction. Comfortable inaction. U.S. equities are at all-time highs. You have no strategy except buy and hold. Comfortable inaction. Do you trust the system? Maybe it goes up forever. Maybe they raise rates to 10% and equities double again. Have you looked at history? Do you know how markets typically play out? You've seen boom and bust periods before, right? Now, I'm not saying this is a boom and bust period. The fact that as a percentage of the S&P, the concentration of the five largest equities comprises the highest percentage of the S&P at any time in decades right now. What does that mean? Can you bet off that? Hell no. Is it something that you enter into your trend-following soup? Nope. But it is reality that there are booms and busts. So you have to think about it. Where are you in terms of comfortable in action? Don't get too comfortable. You being deep, you get too comfortable. I think the trend-following one that I really liked, and I implore you to go check out the video. I've been a huge fan of his forever. Even though I'm not a tennis guy, I liked watching him play tennis. This would be Roger Federer. And he just gave a commencement address at some university. It might have been Dartmouth, I'm not sure. Again, the video is worth checking out. But to quote Federer from his commencement speech, In tennis, perfection is impossible. In the 1,526 singles matches I played in my career, I won almost 80% of those matches. Now, I have a question for you. What percentage of points do you think I won in those matches? It was only 54%. In other words, even top-ranked tennis players win barely more than half of the points they play. When you lose every second point on average, you learn not to dwell on every shot. Why is that trend following? He's telling you he's got a small edge. And if he plays his game with a small edge over time, he wins. Trend following is the same thing. It's a small edge played over time. But Mike, I want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. Look at this chart, Mike. Look at the cup and handles and the support and the resistance. And some Japanese named candlestick. No. Please, God, no. Are you really doing that? You're going to lose money. You're not going to make money. Isn't the goal to make money? It's got to be. Peace of mind. Making money. That's the goal here. The goal is not to fall for suckers. So if you don't yet understand the connection between a Roger Federer and trend following, damn it, pick up my trend following book. 
it's 220,000 words for about $30. The kind of insights you ain't getting anywhere else. Oh, Mike, I'm on X. I saw 10 tweets today. Give me a fucking break. Come on. That ain't enough. If you're listening to people tell you what's happening today, if you're really doing that, you're fucked. That's not the way the game is played. The game is played like Federer just told you. Find an edge and stick with it consistently. But Mike, that sounds a little boring. Well, are you in this to make money? Are you in this for excitement? Because if you want excitement, if you pay for me, I'll take you to Vegas. I know exactly where to go in Vegas for excitement. Now, I've never given Vegas a dime of my money in the casino, but I know where to go to Vegas for excitement. And guess what? That ain't the path to making money. That's the path for excitement. So what the hell do you want? Excitement or money? Excitement or peace of mind? I can only help people that want to make money. That's what I do. I help people that want to make money. And on average, above average money. Does that mean I can give you a guarantee? Hell no. Anyone that gives you a guarantee is a lying scumbag and you know it. Now you still might fall for it, but that's your fault, not my problem. And if I shift it to someone like Howard Marks, who has appeared on this podcast... And Marx has a great line that I saw the other day. I guess I saw it in his book before, but I had forgotten. But Marx has a great line on day trading. He says, day traders considered themselves successful if they bought a stock at 10 and sold at 11. Bought it back the next week at 24 and sold at 25. And bought it a week later at 39 and sold at 40. If you can't see the flaw in this that the trader made $3 in a stock that appreciated by 30, you probably shouldn't read the rest of this book. Damn, right? Damn. Don't you just love smart MFs like that? That don't give a shit whether you like them, dislike them, or anything. All that man is into is the truth. So if you're listening right now, and you want to make money, and you don't understand the Roger Federer connection to trend following, and you dismiss a guy like Howard Marks, and you pursue day trading, what the hell is wrong with you? What do you need, a shrink? Your mom didn't hug you enough? What the hell is wrong with you? Come on, man. Again, back to the opening quote that I talked about where women will always be after you if you're chasing money, if you're chasing ambition. That's it. You got to be real with yourself. You can't be a fake. I mean, you can be a fake if you want. You can be a knucklehead if you want. But what the hell, man? You got limited time on this planet. I mean, you can flip on the tube right now. CNBC, Bloomberg, some Fed official. Do you really deep down trust any of these people? Do you trust any random voice that comes out and tells you, I think this is going to happen tomorrow, or you should buy that, or you should buy this? If you trust that, don't play in the markets. Not unlike what Mark said, stop reading my book. But if you implicitly trust people, including me, and you don't verify, you have a condition, some deep-seated condition. I don't know if it can be treated. Probably not. It's unfortunate, but life moves on. Some people have the wherewithal to hear the truth and act on it. Some people hear the truth and act like idiots. I don't know why that is. I really don't care, to be honest with you. I really don't. I mean, why should I care? Why should you care? I mean, if people don't get it, fuck them, right? That's all you can do. That's all you can say. Got a couple of emails I want to share with you. The first one, hi, Michael. Hope you're well. I 
think about emailing you from time to time, but this one really compelled me to. There's a macro investor with a podcast show. His name is Blank. On this past Friday's podcast with another macro investor named Blank, there were several times where they talked about when to get out of the big moves. They gave examples from the past when they got out too early. One instance, the guy asked the other guy specifically when to get out. His response was, quote, somewhere in the middle. Now, the guy that writes me goes on to say, these are smart men, but it seems they have no knowledge of trend following. What is somewhat odd is that one of them has referenced the Market Wizards books several times. You can listen to the podcast if you want, maybe use it for content, but here's the kicker. At the end of the show, one of them was promoting an eight-hour seminar on uranium investing. I'm thinking eight hours when all you need is price. And this guy says, I found out about you from a Tim Price newsletter and it immediately clicked with me. And he says he hopes to become a client of mine soon if he can ever stop making stupid decisions with his money. If you find yourself at one of these eight-hour uranium seminars, go to Vegas. It's more fun, right? I mean, if you're signed up and you're sitting in a room with 100 other dudes and you're listening to some guru talk to you about uranium mining, literally get up, get on a plane, and go to Vegas. Go to Macau. Go to Singapore. Do something. But sure as shit, get out of the event on uranium investing. Sometimes it's hard, though, to share these kinds of messages like I share today. Because when you have a situation where equity prices are high, real estate prices are high, crypto is high, and rates are high, it's one of those weird times where people, they don't seem to listen or want to listen. People start to look at their bank accounts, their brokerage statements, and they just get really excited if they're a buy and hold investor. Perhaps they feel smarter. But like I said earlier, that's not really a great plan. There's more than enough evidence that buy and hold ding will have periods where you get caught on the wrong side. And when you're caught on the wrong side for a decade plus, if you are looking to stop working or if you wanted to go travel the world, your whole world can change and the opportunities can go away. The easiest way, the best way, the most logical way to stay grounded, to stay connected to good strategy is to think back to what I said a few minutes ago with Federer. Again, the small edge, sticking with it, being consistent, trusting yourself, having some values and principles, and not being suckered by gurus who got you in uranium investing seminars or Australian gold mine seminars or some meme coin bullshit. My goal is always very simple. I want myself and I want everyone out there to do well financially, meaning I'm going to make a lot of money. I want you to make a lot of money. And if we chase that, if we chase that ambition, meaning we have good strategy, we work hard, well, it's right back to the beginning. We are in the place, you are in the place that people will be attracted to you because everybody wants to be around people that are making things shake. They want to be around people that are making things move. It's fun. It's energetic. I mean, right now, if you're sitting around and you're 200 pounds overweight, and they've just put you on Ozempic. And boy, my God, should you go read the side effects of taking the fat drug Ozempic. But if you're sitting around on that damn shit, all I can tell you is, stop worrying about investing. Solve that problem first. Get some sun. Start walking. Start jogging. Start some CrossFit. Start some yoga. I work out every day. And a lot of it is for not only the health reasons, but it's for the high reasons. 
It's for what it does to me, the clarity it gives me, the clarity to share with you today. That's from exercise. That's from quality of life. I mean, if you're out there right now sleeping three to four hours a night and you got some job working for the man, could be the bank, could be the post office, I don't care, and you're not happy, change it. Change it. Change it right now. What do you got to lose? Last time I checked, there ain't no life extension. You got one shot. One shot. And with that one shot, all I got to ask, what are you going to do? And if you want some help, if you want some insights, I sure as hell will share with you. See you again next week. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.